So just a kind of a big picture, you have the chromatin in the cell. Let's say that's one chromosome, all right? You get two copies, one from mom and one from dad, but they're, they're chromatin, so it's unwrapped. Why is it unwrapped? Because it's being replicated or there's protein synthesis going on. So this is all chromosome number one. Let's say it's chromosome number one. So that's what's happening. It's just unwrapped, things are happening, life is good. Cell cycle occurs, you get to S phase. What's S phase gonna do? It's doing what? It's duplicating. So now instead of one strand, double stranded, right? Two strands. Instead of one, one DNA molecule, you have two. Two exact copies, right? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So now you have these two copies of chromosome number one. The randomly kind of bent. It's still chromosome number one, but and there's now that each one of these, each one of these is called the what? Chrom a chromatid. That's right. Remember that each one of those is this, right? It's double stranded. It looks like this. Two strands. Isn't that crazy? So it's two of two of two of two. So it's a little nutty on that on that note. So there's a double helix here. There's a double helix here. These are copies of one another. They're called sister chromatids, right? They're exact copies. There's an exact copy here, but this is not the same. This one is not the same as this one, right? This one came from mom. This one came from dad. Let's not forget that. So you have that. Then what happens during mitosis when you're first ready? What's the first step? Mitosis is called what? Prophase. That's right. What happens in prophase? Go ahead, say it. It's okay if you're wrong. Making a mistake now is the best time to make a mistake. What's the first, what's the first step? What happens? What's one of the things that happens in prophase? They become visible, right? Because they condense. So they become this looks something like this, right? But there's not just one little bundle all wrapped around histones. How many bundles do you have? Two, because they're being copied. Remember we had them copied? Remember over here we copied them? They look like this first, and then they look like this. Okay? So there, so there they are. There's your two chromosomes, from one from dad. They're exact copies. They're sister chromatids, right? It's one chromosome, but sister chromatids. And then you have what? Another exact copy, two exact copies of, one, of each other. They're both chromosome one, but they're different, aren't they? One came from mom, one came from dad. So that's what you have. So that's prophase. That's what's happening. Now... The other thing that happens in prophase, there's some other stuff that happens in prophase, but I'm going to quickly outline it here, then we'll go into some detail, is they form, a, they do synapsis. So they come together, they touch. All four of them, four sister chromatids come together. Each of these is known as a what? Each of these chromosomes, these two chromosomes are known as what to each other? Sister. Well, the sister chromatids are these things I'm drawing right now, right? The, the exact copies. What are the two chromosomes with two chromatids each? What do we call those two? Mm -hmm. Say what? Are we no, nope, close, uh, kind of, sort of. They're called homologs, right? Homologs. So the red and the black that you see in front of you here, these are homologs, right? There's two homologs. So the chromosome one, when you see two copies, and they, we call them homologs, homologous chromosome, chromosomes. They're the same chromosome, but they have different what? They have different alleles. So the genes, if this is the gene for, let's say, height, let me, there's a gene here that controls height. It has some influence on height. Then the first one, let's go ahead and take a zoom in real close. Did we do this already? Did we... Discuss the, the dwarfism? Yeah. All right. So we did do that. So we have done this. All right. But it's good that you don't... I'm glad you didn't... You know you didn't remember. But... So when you look at this, if this is big A, then it's... A, is the, that's a, the gene for dwarf. This is an exact copy, so it has to be big A. But mom, maybe she was no, uh, average height, and so we say little a. Now, why are they both the same? Because they're exact copies. So... Even though you have the same gene here at this same place in the DNA, 
Even though they're the same gene, big A or little a, they're two different alleles. There's a big A and this a little a. Anytime you say the dominant gene, it shows up. So, okay, so there's height. This is kind of a foreshadowing what we'll be talking about next. So, the gene is there. This is all chromosome 1. So, the first step in, me in meiosis is prophase, and we just have to go through synapsis. Synapsis, right? Which is the formation of this tetrad. What is tetrad? No. Four. It's good. I'm glad you... There was Two was a really great guess, right? Because there's two chromosomes. So good. Good choice. But tetra means four. Tetra, tit, a tetrad has four chromatids, sister chromatids. You see that? One, two, three, four. Tetrad, four. Okay? We're all good with that? So the next thing that happens during prophase, all of this is happening in prophase one, the first prophase. During prophase, this part of wherever they touch, they can cross over. So this part can switch. So what can happen is that this part of the chromosome right here can switch with this part of the chromosome right here. Isn't that interesting? So there's a, there are consequences to this switching. This is the reason meiosis ha is, is, has an advantage over mitosis for replicating. This is why sex is an advantage over asexual division. Because of crossover? Because of crossover. You'll see why in a minute. So the tetras during meiosis is crossing over occurs, and then we move forward. And then what happens, uh, just to go over again, this is general, we'll go look at the details in a minute. So that's what you have. And the next step, they start to line up, don't they? But where in mitosis, they line up in, remember mitosis? If we looked at mitosis, they would line up like this, right? There's chromosome 1, there's chromosome 1, and they line up on the metaphase plate. Do you remember that? And they're attached with spindle fibers to the centri uh, centrioles on each side in animals, in plants, to the cell wall. And they get pulled apart. The sister chromatids get pulled apart, right? They get one chromosome, one from mom over here, and one chromosome, one from dad over here, and one chromosome, one from mom over here, one chromosome, one from dad over here, and they're the same, and they're two identical cells, right? But here in meiosis, what, you, what happens is that you get, after you cross over, you get chromosome, dad's chromosome coming over here, and they, it's after you crossed over, right? So it's part mom, part dad, where you, they used to be identical, now they're not identical anymore. So you got part mom, part dad. Do you see that? This is the part that crossed over, right? So one chromatid, one sister chromatid is still what it was. The other one is half what it was or whatever percentage, and the other part is what mom's was. Do you agree? Do you see that? Okay. And then the other, that's the same thing happened to the other chromosome, right? So mom's chromosome, one sister chromatid is the same. That's still the same. You see, it's nice to have colored pencils, isn't it? One of the reasons it's on the supply list. And the other sister chromatid is still kind of the same. So mostly the same. So the same, they're still identical. But then, then you get some of dad's coming on this chromosome. So some of the, your dad's. Now here you're not, you're, not, you're not talking about sex yet. You're talking about making the sex cells. Here we're talking about making gametes, making sperm or making eggs. Is that clear? This is how we make eggs or sperm. Because remember, there's two functions of meiosis. One is to reduce the chromosome number from 2n to n. And the second thing is to increase genetic variation. So OK, so we have this thing. Cro it's crossed over. You see that they've crossed over. So these are in two different cells now, right? You have one here and one here. Now we had, think about what this means. In mitosis, one copy from mom, one copy from dad in each one. Now you got dad's, dad, your dad's 
genes in one cell, one full copy of dad's chromosome, and the other one has half and half, mom and your mom and your dad's chromosomes, DNA. In the other cell, you have mostly your mom's and then some of your dad's in that cell. So now you've, you've changed it, right? You've changed it up. I, ideally, you got, that's how you get two different human beings. How can you have a sister, a twin sister? I can't, you know, how can you have a sister and then the other one it be a brother? How does that happen? Because the DNA has changed. Why is that? Because you separated your mother's DNA from your father's DNA. You did that in your ovaries and if you're a male in your testicles, right? We separate them in our gametes. But we're not done yet. Because what would happen if I, if I took the, what I just drew and I, and I took these cells and I combined them with some my wife's cells? If I combine them with a with my if you had sex and you combine these cells with another gamete, you would end up with not two copies of every gene, but four copies of every gene. Because look, here's one set of genes, and what's this one over here? Another set of genes. If you took this and you if this is where you stopped, if you, if you only stopped at the one division, right, then and you combine this cell with another cell from your spouse, you, and they did the same thing, you'd end up with four copies of the same chromosome in every cell. That is not acceptable. By the way, that's one of your homework question answers from the book. Right? Why is it that it would not, what would happen if you did use mitosis to make, to, to combine genes to make another creature, right? Without dividing the DNA in half, right? Without going from two end, by the way, we started with 2N, which means what? Two copies. 2N means two copies of every chromosome, two copies of every gene. Right now, we, st we are still at 2N. You see? Do you all agree with us, 2N? What did we do with the first meiosis, meiotic division? We separated mom's DNA from dad's DNA, our mother's DNA from our father's DNA. And we also, we also mixed it up a little bit, didn't we? So we have a little bit of mixed up DNA and then one that's just dads and the other one's just moms. That's the purpose of meiosis. To mix up DNA and to make it go from 2N to 1N. We need to half it. But wait a minute. We haven't halved it yet, so what do we have to do again? What do we have to do? Divide it again. right? Divide the nucleus again. So we go through my meiosis, you're going to do another cell division. So we're going to go do another, another, another series of, of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. We did the same, except this time we're not doing any DNA synthesis. We're not making copies. That's number one. And then the other thing is that this time they line up just like they did with in, my, in mitosis. They line up one chromosome on top of the other. So now we're going to separate what? Before we separate the chromosomes, now we're we separating the chromatids, just like in mitosis, right? So now we go ahead and separate them. One, two, three, four. Now we have, instead of producing two cells, how many cells did we produce? Four. And here you have one that looks like this, the other looks like it. this and then this one. Oh, I did that backwards, sorry. So what I'm drawing is trying to draw the same thing I drew above. I really should just copy it, I guess, but I didn't. So remember, we have one mixed chromosome and then the other one was also mixed. I messed up again, man. All right. So we went from two N here in this in this in these cells, right, to now to one N, only one copy of each chromosome. We had, in the beginning, we either had a black one or a red one, right? Either one from mom or one from dad. Now we got one from dad, the black one, one from, one from mom, the red one. 
Then we got one from mostly dad. At, you know, the top part was mostly dad, the bottom part's mom's. And the other one, the top part's mom, and the bottom part's dad. So we mixed up the DNA. Meiosis increases genetic variation. We're going to look exactly how. In just a minute, we're going to connect it to Punnett squares. But that's the idea of meiosis. Those are the big ideas. The big ideas are, are three main ideas. I keep telling you I'm going to try to help you out by pointing out the important parts here. Here are the important parts. Meiosis, you do it twice. You do mitotic, you do a division, a cell division twice. Without duplicating the DNA. You start like duplicating the DNA like you did in DNA in mitosis. So that, but you divide it twice. Why do you divide it twice? The first time you divide it, you're separating mom's DNA from dad's DNA. You're separating the chromosomes. The second time you divide it, you're separating the chromatids. So you end up with only half the DNA in each cell. You only end up with N number of chromosomes. Now why is that? What are we going to do with that? What are you going to do with these cells? They're gametes, they're sex cells. What do you think you use sex cells for? Mm, kind of. But what do, you what do you think you use sex cells for? What do you use sex cells for? Make kids. Make kids. To have sex. Sex is to make babies. I didn't hear that, but that's fine. So you're going to combine cells. You're going to take a cell from your cell, if you're a male, let's say you're a male, and, and you're, going to, you're going to have, you're going to somehow take your wife's DNA, and you're going to combine it into a new being, right? That new cell is going to have what? How many chromosomes? Two. So here you made one N, one N, I should use lowercase n, one N combines to make what? A two N. This is a full diploid organism. Diploid meaning two chromosomes. Each, each chromosome is two copies of each chromosome. This is now you. You've just made a, a, a new embryo or a new fetus or a new baby, depending on how far along in development you get. Okay, so you just made a new creature. So sometimes it don't work out, like you don't even develop? Yeah. It's called a miscarriage. Oh, yeah. Or abortion, or... Um, abortion is a miscarriage. It's on purpose, pretty much. Um, Spontaneous abortions or whatever, what we call miscarriages that happens all the time, that there's something wrong genetically or something, the mother, something happens to the mom, whatever the reason, there's a million reasons for it, the baby isn't able to develop. So how does birth control stop that from happening? It's a whole long story, but there's several ways you can do it. You can stop ovulation, so stop releasing the egg. If you're not releasing an egg, you don't get, you can't get the, you can't combine the cells, right? And then the other thing is you can stop the sperm from getting to the egg, so there's all kinds of tools for that. You can Discuss it with, a, with a, your health teacher when you get there, or your, your mother. I'd rather not discuss it in class. But there's a series of ways to stop, to stop the sperm from getting to the egg. That's the objective. Stop the sperm and the egg from coming together. You don't, then you stop a baby from forming, a fetus from forming, an embryo from forming. However you want to do that. Just for the record, because I, was, uh, I did, work, I did uh, do some work with the free clinic at one point, uh, I can tell you that Jumping up and down does not stop the sperm from getting to the egg. I mean, I'm just telling you, people think some, I, some of, I, I, let me pause. I'm going to compile all these videos into one video for you, uh, mitosis and meiosis. I have some old ones I can send you as well if you don't like what we've done with mitosis and meiosis. Hopefully you've all read the chapters already, 9 and 10. You understand, we've gone over the cell cycle, we've gone over mitosis, you know the steps. Now let's talk about meiosis and how it's different. Meiosis is outlined for you, on, in, of course you've gone over it in the chapter, page 143, it outlines what meiosis is, and on page 144 it compares one, uh, uh, meiosis 1 to meiosis 2, and then if you go, keep going on... 145, it talks about crossing over. It's important that you do that now, especially after we go over this, so that you can start understanding what is meiosis and what's the products that are reserved. Meiosis is what the Punnett squares are based on. Then mitosis and meiosis, then comparing mitosis and meiosis, and then 
What is gene linkage? What is recombination? Yes, that's my text message from my wife. You have to deal with it. Sorry, I printed. Advantage, uh, the, what's the advantage of sex as, this, as a mechanism? And uh, genomes, right? So that's what we have to cover now. Uh, what uh, That section I expect you to have done uh, soon, right? So this is uh, viable now. Now let's talk about what meiosis is and what's gene linkage. So me, remember we talked about the phases of mitosis. The phases of meiosis are the same, except you're going to do it twice. You're going to have prophase. Let me see. That's right. You're going to have prophase 1. I'm glad that people did their homework and they, and they understand uh, some basics here. So you're going to have prophase. And you're going to have prophase 1. And then you're going to have metaphase 1. Anaphase 1. Say what? And then telophase 1, that's right. And you, the telophase 1 means you have a cell, right? You have two new cells. So we have telophase 1. Telophase 1 means we have two cells. So we had one cell. Now we have two cells, right? After you go through this process. Then each of these cells go through prophase 1, 2, right? Each of these cells does prophase metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So if each of these cells are going to do those steps, right, each of these cells is going to produce how many cells? Two. Two. So you're going to end up, at the end of meiosis, you end up with how many cells? Four, Four cells. This is called gametogenesis, or this is meiosis is part of gametogenesis. It's the production of gametes, right? So these are going to be gametes. They're either going to be sperm or egg, one of the two. In a woman, it'll be eggs. In a, in a male... It, and a female will be eggs, and a male will be sperm. That's it. And so these are obviously prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. So it's the same process, except there's some twists to it. There's some changes. There's some real reasons for these changes, and some really deep. And not, when I say reasons, and this is why it's going to take a couple days to go through meiosis, because it's it's more than just. It's mitosis twice, which it is. It is mitosis twice. But there's some real differences that make a deep change and give us an advantage over bacteria. We have an advantage over bacteria. Bacteria have an advantage as well. They can re reproduce very quickly. We have an advantage over bacteria, though, those of us that have sex, those species of life that have sex, including plants, right? Plants have sex and worms have sex and humans have sex. And what we're talking about sex is recombining the DNA, changing the DNA. Because if we didn't have sex, you would look exactly like your parents. You and I would look exactly like each other. If we didn't have sex, we would all look alike. All, all members of the same species would look alike. Well, that could be terrible, could be good. I'm not going to make a value judgment, but it would be a lot different. And we wouldn't be able to be as adaptive. We wouldn't be able to adapt to a new environment as easily, right? So sex allows us to have this variation of features of what we call phenotypes, right? A variation of phenotypes. So if something happens to some of us, it doesn't have to happen to all of us. Question. That's right. That's exactly right. You got it. I'm glad you were listening. Here's the thing. is that If we were all the same, then that's the problem with clones, right? Bananas are all cloned. Did you know that? What? Every banana that you go to the supermarket and buy, at least the big yellow bananas, because there are other kinds of bananas. I know you don't know that. But the big yellow bananas, all, all the yellow bananas, they all come from clones of the same tree. Somebody a long time ago said, wow, this is a great looking banana. I'm going to make clones of this tree. And they made all over the world, these clones exist. 
we have a problem. There's a disease that's killing these banana trees. So now what happens to all the banana trees? They're bye-bye. They're all in danger. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when you're dealing with clones, they're just like with bacteria. When you get a bacterial infection, what do we do? We give, them a, we give you an antibiotic. And that one pill kills all of them, right? And see, that's the key. There is some genetic variation in bacteria. We'll talk about why that is but later. But the bottom line is, it's, key, it's important that we take advantage of that when we're fighting these asexual organisms. Asexual means non-sex reproducing, right? Asexual organisms that are able to do binary fission so quickly that they, their numbers quickly are competitive against us. So that's why they're quicker than sexual. That's why what? That's right. That's why they're faster, because they don't have to do mitosis, meiosis, and there's no sex involved. They can do it all by themselves. They just keep going through the cell cycle over and over and over again without having to do what we're talking about here. All right, so in, met in interphase, you're still doing the S phase. You're still duplicating the DNA. I'm going to go ahead and use just two chromosomes, if you don't mind. Here's one chromosome from the mother. Here's one chromosome, one from the father. Here's another chromosome from... Uh, the mother. Here's another chromosome from the father. This is in a nucleus, right? Well, it's going to go through synthesis mm -hmm. in interphase, and it's going to make copies, and then in prophase one, what do we have to do if we're going to separate them? We have to organize them, right? Because remember, these don't look like this in the cell, right? These are all... Uh, these are all chromatin, all unwound. So in prophase, the first thing it's going to do is they're going to condense, but we paper clip them together, so now they do look like something like this, right? Does everybody agree? Yeah. And we got two of each chromosome. This is a diploid organism. And we got two of each, and one, came, one copy came from mom, one set came from mom, one other set came from their, our dad. But now we have four, two, we have, we have, one, if this is chromosome one, can I number? Is it okay if I number them for you? Here's chromosome one. If you had done your homework on, on the karyotyping, you know what I'm doing here. And this is, this is still chromosome one. And this is chromosome two. And then this is still chromosome two. So there's two copies of each chromosome, right? And we copied those copies. So now we got four copies, right? Here's one, two, three, four. What are these called? The sister chromatids? Sister chromatids. Sister chromatids. So these are sister. These sister chromatids are identical. The gene sequence here is the same. The sequence here is the same sequence that's here. Exactly the same, theoretically, right? Ideally, these are the same. These are exactly the same as these. But do you understand that chromosome 1 is not the same sequence as chromosome 1 here, right? Mm -hmm. They have the same genes, but the sequences are still a little bit different. So if mom was pale skin, blonde hair, blue eyed, and dad was dark skin, black hair, brown eyed, right? Then I'm going to have genes from those two different sets, right? So mom's genes will be genes for blue eyes and blonde hair and lighter skin, and dad's genes will be darker skin and brown eyes and black hair, right? So dad's genes for chromosome number one are going to be different from mom's genes from chromosome number one. I'm going to have both sets. Am I making sense here? Yes. So the sequence between no, the two chromosome number ones are not going to be the same. The sequences between the sister chromatids, though, are exactly the same. That's key. So the sequences, so A, C, G, C, T, 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 is going to be the same between these two. It's going to be the same between these two, but it's not the same between these two. So the, two, the sister chromatids are exactly identical. Are we all, are, are we good with that? Any questions about that? Okay. So now, that's prophase, right? And remember, also, don't, let's not forget, goodness, let's not forget, in prophase, we got rid of what? The, the, nucle nuclear. Nuclear, the nuclear envelope, right? Obviously, there's no number ones in the nucleus, or that's just me writing it. It dissolves, that's right. It'll, it'll reform later, remember that, but it'll, it'll dissolve. So now, the next phase 
has something that there is something going on that's called synapsis. That does this does not happen in in uh, in mitosis. Synapsis does not happen in mitosis. Synapsis happens. Synapsis happens in prophase. So it's still in prophase. This is early prophase over here, uh, early. And then later in prophase, synapsis starts happening. What happens in synapsis is the homologs. We're going to call these homologs. You see these here? These are homologs. Is everybody okay with that? Homo logs. Right? So homo means the same. So And these two are homologs. So both chromosome 1s are homologs, and the two chromosome 2s are homologs. What happens, what happens in, in later in, in prophase is something called synapsis. Now, it's important that you know that synapsis is happening in prophase. One, prophase one. And what is synapsis? Synapsis is just these two chromosomes. And you know what? Can I change the color of these for you? Can I change this to a red... Just so, it, just so you can see the difference. I'm going to change these to red. And so you're going to take these two homologs. They're going to come together. They're still paper clipped together with these cent centrosomes, right? But then these two homologs are going to get put together. You see the difference between mitosis and meiosis? This is a really big difference. These are sticky. Everything's sticking together. They're lining up. They're lining up perfectly, so all the genes are lined up. So if there's, I'm going to go ahead and draw some genes. These are not bands, because bands are just uh, dyes that we add to DNA. But these are, let's call them genes. Let's call this a gene one here. So if it's gene one here on one sister chromatid, there's a gene one here on the other sister chromatid, because they're the same. And in the homologs, the order of the genes are the same, even though the sequences are different. So you'll find gene one here in the other in the other homolog and gene one here in, the, in this homolog as well. So and let's say the, what's the difference then, Mr. Mendoza? I don't understand. If they're all if all the genes are the same, what's the difference? They're not crossing yet. Synapsis is not crossing over yet, but they are. It is the beginning of crossing over. You're right. So so what happens is, what's the difference if the if chromosome if this is chromosome 1, and this is chromosome 1, and this one came from dad, this one came from mom, the gene 1 is here, gene 1 is here, gene 1 is here, gene 1 is here. What's the difference between the genes then? What's the big deal? They're all the same, right? Yes. But they're not. They're not. Because what it is, is that dad could have given you big A. Mm -hmm. And maybe he gave you, uh, maybe is, and this is identical, so this is big A. And then mom gave you little, little A. So, so whatever. Let's not talk. No, hey, somebody. A lot of people say this to me, and it comes from our society. And really, it's really. It sometimes it breaks my heart to hear it. But just because the gene comes, the, if you don't laugh at this either, because there might be some people in the room who think this. Just because gene the genes come from dad does not make them dominant. I've had people say it. The male genes are not always dominant. It's not has nothing to do whether they're male or female, okay? The ge it's whether the gene shows up, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. They th it's, it's just the big A. If, let's go ahead and do another gene. Let's say there's another gene down here. There's a gene here. I have a nightmare that that's going to happen to me, that that's going to be my car they're calling out. I have this, high, I, like I'm embarrassed, I have to walk out there. Thank you. Where do they do that? What floor do they do that on? Fire hydrant? Andy. All right, so you can do it from any floor, but the most announcements come from Andy. So. I know. That's why I don't park in fire lanes. I don't want anybody to call me. I'd be so embarrassed. Uh, uh, the person with MGS GRL license plate, Hyundai, please come and get your... Ah, no, God, it's not me. I'm sorry. Why are you wearing that jacket after I just got done talking about this? Why is he saying, why is he saying bro? 
All right. Is it time to leave? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll finish this. All right, bye. Let's say this gene here controls uh, height. So let's say again that this A controls hair color, right? And you, this is your copy. You make copies of this, right? So you have the genotype. What genotype do you have if you, ha if you made these copies? Remember, these two are connected together, right? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. these, two are kind of, these are sister chromatids. You made this as a copy. So what was your genotype for this gene? A, for A gene, for hair color. What were you? You were big A and what? And a little A. You got little A from mom. You got the big A from dad, right? Okay. So that's your A genotype. Now, let's choose another letter. Let's just pick B. You can pick whatever letter you want, but let's pick B. Let's say that B is dwarfism. Let's say you're a dwarf. And you're the kind of you're a type of dwarf. There's there's various types. You can get dwarfism in many different ways. You get a a person can be a dwarf in many different ways. Many different genes can can result in this. One possible form of dwarfism can come from a dominant source. So let's for, let's assume that this dwarfism is dominant. Okay, and you're a dwarf. So that would be the letter B. Let's say your mom gave you that gene. Your mom was a dwarf, and you're a dwarf as well. So your dad wasn't. So your dad has two. Your dad gave you the little b. You made a copy of it, right? Let me let me highlight this. Let me show you something. Let me say this here. This is the centrum centrosome, right? Or centromere. And this centromere is connecting the two copies that you made. So remember, you see four letters here, right? But you only have two letters in each one of your cells. You just make a copy of each one. Don't forget that, right? It's very confusing sometimes if you, don't, if you lose track of that. All right, so mom gave you a big B, and you copied it, and there's your other big B. So you're going to give, each one of these is going to end up at the end of meiosis in either a sperm or an egg, depending if you're a boy or girl, right? And so what, ch what are the chances that, that your mom Right, that your child is going to be a dwarf. 50-50, because it's either going to get this big B or it's going to get this big B. You have four sperm or four eggs, and two of them could end up in a child being a dwarf. So now you have, you know, 50-50 chance of, being a, of having a child that's, that is a dwarf. This is the basis for a Punnett square. This is why a Punnett square has four squares, because there's four gametes being produced. Now, when we talk about two genes, and we'll talk about that in a minute, then it gets a little more. And then we need to do 16, and we'll see why as soon as we're done. But this is why you have to understand meiosis before you go on to Punnett square, in my opinion, anyways. Okay, so that being said, let's squeeze this down and look at it. So that's, synapsis is occurring. Now we have something that's called, now, so right now, as of now, if we did my meiosis, and by the way, let's remember that meiosis, uh, what are the steps of meiosis? Meiosis, the steps of meiosis are prophase, right? Pro, uh, prophase, oh, I keep, I don't know why I do that. Prophase. One. If you have one, what does that suggest? The first one. You're going to have at least two. It's going to be the first one, so there's probably going to be a second, right? Uh, prophase, and what's next? Metaphase. Metaphase. And that's going to be one. And then what? Anaphase. Anaphase. And that's going to be one. And then what? Telophase. Telophase. And that'll be one. And then what happens after that? And, of course, cytokinesis, right? So you have one. One cell, after it goes through all that, does what? Becomes two. So that's, this is cytokinesis. And then what happens? The second meiosis. And how many cells are you going to get at the end of that? Four, right? You have one, two, three, four. 
Do you all, everybody agree with that? And the objective of meiosis is at the end, instead of having 2N, you started in the beginning with 2N, didn't you? In other words, you started with two copies of each chromosome. You started with two number ones and two number twos, right? What do we want at the end of meiosis? N, which means what? One copy of each, right? So you only want one number one, and you want one number two. One number one, and one number two. One number one, and one number two. One number one, and one number two. This is all chromosome number one. If we draw out chromosome number two, I'm drawing num chromosome number two is much smaller. Let me do the same color because that way it matches up. Connected by a central mirror. And let's draw a gene here. Let's say this is C. This is all C here. So here's your chromosome number two. So notice you had two copies of chromosome number one and two copies of chromosome number two in the beginning, right? But now you're going to have one of each in each of these four. Does that make sense? Yeah. So right now, what are your possible A's? Let's worry about chromosome number one. What different combination A's could you have? What are the possible different combination A's you could have? Let's see. Let me, let's look at it. You can have what? Big, you could have big A, little b. You can have what? Big A, little b. Or you can have little a, little b, big b, and big A, little b, right? Little a, yes. So what are the four possibilities right now without thinking about crossing over? Well, let's, this is without crossing over, so let's do without crossing over. What are the possible combinations? You could have big A, little b. Do you agree? That's this one. Uh, you can have another one. This one then could be what? Big A, little b again, right? That's this one here. Does everybody agree with me so far? Yeah. And, and then the next one's going to be little a, big B, and the next one's going to be little a, big B. So there's basically two different kinds of sperm or two different kinds of eggs that you can produce. Do you agree? Okay. And I'm going to, and we could do the same thing with lit number two, but let's just stick with number one for now. But hold on, before, is it right now this one, to about this right here? Yeah. All right, go. Not, not in this case, not yet, right? Why? Why not? Because you're, because you're either going to get this chromosome, this chromosome, once they separate, right? This chromosome or this one. You only got four choices here. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So now, the problem comes, it's not a problem, it's something that we call crossing over. When crossing over happens, we're going to change things up a little bit. So what happens if crossing over, and I'm going to go ahead and draw this, uh, draw this out again. If I have this, I'm going to draw a little bigger. You have this big A, this gene with big A here, right? Oh, that didn't work. Big A here, right? And then you have, over here you have uh, little b. Everybody agree, right? And over here, you have this same copy, right? So this is a copy. Here you have big A. And oh, down here, you have uh, little b. Everybody okay with that? All right. And then you have a tetrad, right? We said this is a tetrad. So it's connected to another, to the copy that you got from your mom that you made copies of, again, during the synthesis phase. You made a copy. Let's draw the centromere so everybody sees that. I shouldn't draw this thing here. They're, they're connected. I don't like drawing this because it confuses people. All right, so here's another, the same gene, same place, okay? And let's say that this one's little a, little a. Again, this is the one you got from your mom. But it's this time, it's big B, big B, right? That's where we got these, right? These four possible 
combinations. Well, when crossing over happens, what happens is that these chromosomes, the ones that are the sister chromatids that are that are touching each other in the tetrad, they can switch. They switch. So something happens, I don't want to talk about the details, but this little break happens here, and a break happens here, and then this part comes over there, and then this part of the chromosome goes over here. So what you end up with is this. You end up with, let me move it up a little bit. What you end up with is this one is pretty, oh, wrong color. This one is still big A, little b, okay? But now this one is what? That's right. This one, oops, I shouldn't have drawn that. This one's now the half and half, right? These two are now, it's kind of a hybrid. And what you end up with is you still got the big A up here, because that didn't change. But now instead of this one, this gene being uh, little b, it's now big B. Okay, I have a question. Yeah? So after this, you don't draw the Yeah, you can draw the It's still there. That's a good point. The centromere is still there. Thank you. And then here you have this chromosome. The, this one's still the same, right? This one's still little a. This one's still little a. And then, but this one here switched up. Instead of having big B, now it has little b. And now this over here has, instead of a, it still has its big B, doesn't it? So let's say, let's again say this is hair color, right? Let's say, let's just for the, uh, an argument sake, let's say this is hair color, this is black hair, and this is blonde hair, right? Just remember that. Big A is black hair, little A is blonde hair. Little B is normal or uh, average height, and big B means a, uh, you have, you're kind of a, in the dwarf range. Of height. Okay, so remembering that, that's phenotype, right? These are genotypes. You see these? These are genotypes. It's a sequence of genes. You don't see that, right? You have to do a test. You have to do all kinds of experiments to figure out what the genotype is. But the phenotype is what you see. So black hair or blonde hair, average height or dwarf, that is what you see. That's the phenotype. That's really important. Okay. So now, we're going to go, uh, we switched it, so now what are your possibilities? We said before, we used to have, what, 50-50, right? From this original combination, you could have 50% would be, of your eggs or sperm, would be big A, little b, and 50% would be what? Little a, big b. Do you see that? Okay. Now with this new combination, what are the chances? What are what are the possibilities for your for your sperm or eggs to have? What could they have? There's four of them again. There's still four. What is the first one? Big A, little B. What about the second one? Big A, big B. And this the next genotype? Little A, little B. And the last genotype? Big B. So those are your four possible genotypes now. So now you have 25% chance of each of these. And all that, what did you do? What did you do to the, to the, to the variability, the variation, the genotypic variation? What did you do? Did you increase or decrease it? Decreased. You increased it. Because you used to only have, variation means well, how many different kinds do you have? You used to have only two kinds. Now you got four kinds. You're right. I can see why you're saying decrease because the percentage is decreased. The percentage of each one decreased, but your how many different ones you have increased. Does that make sense? Okay. So what does that mean phenot phenotypically? Phenotypically. All right. Well, assuming that you married someone, who went through the same process, but they were recessive for everything. We're going to do a test cross. 
Test cross is when you have only recessive traits, right? So this person was blonde, blonde and normal height. So they were little a, little a, little b, little b. For them, it doesn't matter if crossing over happens for these two genes, right? Because they're only possible babies they can make, the only possible eggs or sperm they, they have to give is what? Recessive. So there's only one type of egg or sperm they can make. It's a little a, little b. That's it. So you agree with that? Do, I don't have to draw it all out, do I? You should be able to see, I hope, that you can draw it all out like I do here. Same thing you can do with the spout. Okay, so if you married someone, this is your, these are your, these are your, your sperm or your eggs, the possible, you know, 25% of your sperm are this, 25% of your sperm are that, or 25% of your eggs are this, 25, et cetera. You married someone who's, who's again, blonde, right? What's the, what's the phenotype here? This is blonde. And this is average height. Right? So that's someone who's average height and blonde. And you're a dwarf. And you married someone who's average height, average height and blonde. So you're, all your eggs or all your sperm are all a little a, little b. Well, how many different kinds of babies can you make if you want to, if you're going to make babies? So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's say this is the girl or the, the wife. And so you, you're a female. So these are your eggs. And let's say that this is the male over here. So these are your possible sperm. So the first question is, if I have this genotype, if my genotype is, is uh, I have four chromosomes. So what is, it? What is my genotype? It's, it's big A, uh, little a, big B, little b, right? So I'm heterozygous. That's my genotype. And I have, and I'm going to be, I'm crossing with my wife who's blonde and, and normal height. She's going to be little a, little a, little b, little b. Do you agree so far? All right. So what I, I need to, I need to know, I need to come up with how many different, what are the different kinds of sperm and what are the different kinds of eggs that we can make? Well, my, myself as the male, as the as the dwarf and the the black haired dwarf or brunette dwarf dwarf, I can make how many different kinds of sperm? I can make a sperm that's big A little b. I can make a sperm that's big A big b, or I can make a sperm that's what little a little b, or I can make a sperm that's what. Little a, big B. Where did I get that? I got it from here, didn't I? Now, does anybody think that they're going to have time on a test, especially in a course exam, to do all this work? No. To do all this work to come up with these gametes? I hope you said no, and I heard a lot of people say no. Are you kidding me with this? <laughs> so, I hope everyone said no. So, how, what method can we use to try to make sure that we get the right combination of genes in our, when we're doing our Punnett square. Our dihybrid, do you understand that this is a dihybrid cross? Those of you that did your homework, do you see this is a dihybrid cross? Why do, I, why do we say dihybrid? Two, two what? Two genes. We're dealing with A and B, right? Height and hair color. Do you see that? I hope you see that. I, I, I hear silence and it worries me. I hope you understand that we're dealing with two genes. And that's why we call it dihybrid cross. If a regular Punnett square would only be a monohybrid cross. You're only dealing with one gene. So that's easier, isn't it? When you're dealing with two genes, it gets a little more complicated. Well, you've all learned the FOIL method, haven't you? Yeah. Right? Yeah, you have. FOIL. So the way you get these is you say, you start to combine them. So you're, these four possibilities came from this person, from me. And I am big A, little a, big B, little b. So what first thing I do is I say, 
and I guess I have it the wrong order, so let me erase this really quickly and put it in the right order. So I mean, this is where I'm at. I'm trying to make this Punnett square, and I want to make it. I want to make sure I don't make a mistake. So I want to use foil, and this is how you're going to do it. You're going to go from it. You're going to use your first, and you're going to combine it with your first. So the big A with big B. You see that? And then you take your first, and you go to the next one. So it's, the next one's what? Big A what? Little b. Then your next. Then you're going to take your second, and you're going to do what? So it'd be big A or rather little a, big B, right? And then you're going to take your second, and you're going to do what? Little a, little b. Do you see that? Do you see this the same as, as we have here? Big A, little b, big A, little b, big A, big b, big A, big b, little a, little b, little a, little b, little a, big b, little a, big b, right? So all four are there, and this is a way to make sure you get it right. So these are the four possible sperm that I can produce as the male dwarf. This is all I can give. These are the sperm, the possibilities. Oh, my God. <laughs> these are the possibilities that we have. I guess I didn't charge the battery, so I'll charge them in a minute. Luckily, I brought some spares. Let me pause this. So here are your sperm. So how many will my wife be able to make? Think about it. Only one kind, right? But if I did the same process, and just to show you, I just want to show you that it would be the same. Big A would be little b, right? Little. I'm sorry, little a, little b, right? And then little a would be with what? Little b. So another little a, little b. And another one would be what? Uh, I would do li uh, the, the little a here with little b there, and then little a there with little b there, right? Mm -hmm. So I would end up with little a, little b all the way down. Do you see that? Yeah. So rather than doing it four times, I could just erase this because it's going to be the same result. Okay, we'll do a heterozygous one in a minute. So we go ahead and draw this down. So when you're dealing with a test cross, this is called a test cross because your only option with one of the parents is a little b, little a. And if you have a reset, the only way to get a recessive trait when you're doing a test cross is if the parent is heterozygous. And I'll explain to you why you need to do a test cross in a minute. I hope we have time. So this, these squares represent the embryos. Do you understand that? So if these are the gametes, these are gametes. These are the these squares are the embryos. So now, big A, little a, big B, little b, big A, little a, little b, little b, little a, little a, big B. Little b, little a, little a, little b, little b. So, I like to do test crosses first because they're easier. Well, when I do the, he the full heterozygote cross in a minute, you'll see it gets just slightly more complicated. It's not really that bad. You see that tw genotypically, 25% are heterozygous for both, right? 25% uh, are heterozygous for one and, my, and homozygous for the other. Do you agree? And 25% homozygous recessive for one and heterozygous for the other. And then 25% are homozygous recessive for both. So again, you end up with 25% across the board. That's genotypically. Now let's look at phenotype. What would the phenotype percentage look like? Well, 25% of these people, these embryos, would end up being a dwarf. That's this big B here, right? And be, uh, have black hair. So black hair and a dwarf. 
That's phenotype. That's what phenotype means. Okay? The next one is black hair. Why black hair? Because you have a big A. Do you see that? The genotype of big A means you have black hair. And, of course, average height. Oh, it's almost time to go. Don't we leave at 18 after? It's 18. It literally just turned 18, just now. Yes, I will. So sit still. The next one's going to be... Look, the next one is little a, little a, which means they're blonde. And yes, I'll spell it with correctly. I do apologize for misspelling it. Blonde hair and uh, average height. And the last one is blonde hair... Oh, no, sorry, not average height. My mistake. Dwarf, right? And then blonde and average height. For your home, one of your homeworks, listen carefully. One of your homeworks you had over winter break was doing a dihybrid cross. And you'll see a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. We'll finish that tomorrow. And we'll finish meiosis tomorrow as well. All right, have a good one. So, thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry I wasn't recording. So, if, assuming these two are heterozygote and we're doing the FOIL method, you'll notice that these two are going to be the same, aren't they? Because they're the same genotypes, so the same possibilities, big A, big B, big A, little b. Now, again, this is knowing, we know that these two are heterozygote. If we don't know they're heterozygote, because it's not possible, if we just know that they have, we need to find out if they're heterozygote or homozygote. Then we do a test cross, and that's the next step, and hopefully we have time, although we only have like seven minutes left. So, little a, big B, and little a, little b. So now we can go ahead and combine our genes, right? So big A, big A, big B, big B, big A, big A. You guys go ahead and do it. I'm not going to repeat it all. If I make a mistake, catch me. I'm going pretty fast. So there you have it. That's, the, that's all the possible genotypes of all the babies. So here's the thing about a dihybrid cross when you're dealing with heterozygous parents. You see how they're heterozygous? What do I mean by heterozygous? They're different. You have big and little for both genes, and they're heterozygous for both. Okay, these are heterozygous parents. So these are the genotype frequencies. In other words, if we look at it, we only have one big A, big A, big B, big B. So it'd be one. How many different big A, big A, big B, little b's do we have? We have one here, another one here, so that's two. So one, two, three, four, to three, to two, to one. So you see the different combinations of genotypes. It's kind of crazy. You don't have to memorize that. But the one thing you need to know is this. Phenotypic ratios. You have to know this ratio. It's easy to do. 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. You need to know that. Right. Good question. How do you figure that out? 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. What does that mean? Well, let's do. Let's just do it, and you'll see where these numbers come from. If there's two heterozygous for two genes, this is always, it always has to be two genes. This ratio is only true when you have two genes and both parents are heterozygous. So what you'll see is, is this, what's the phenotype on this person? So what is it? It's black hair. No, and it's dwarf. We said it. No, 
when you get the tape and listen to it, and you'll see. So that's, and then what's the other, what's this one going to be here? Oh, well, let's just go ahead. This is what? Black hair and dwarf. How, this one's black hair and dwarf. Do you agree? Yes. So that's one. What's the next one? What's this one? Black, black, hair. black hair and dwarf. That's two. What about this one? Black hair and dwarf. That's right. Notice that the genotypes are different, right? But they all have the same feeling. You can't. Could you look at someone who has black hair and dwarf and say, "Oh, that person is heterozygous," or that person's? No. No, you couldn't. So, what's the next one? Black hair and dwarfs. So that's four. Next one. Black hair and dwarf. That's five. Next one. Black. It's what is it? Black hair. And average height. If you think whatever you think, that's fine. Just let's let's get the work done. So that's gonna be what one. And what's this one over here? Black hair, average height. Is it black hair and average height? Oh, no. It's it's black hair and dwarf. So that's six, right? What's the next one? Black hair and average height. So that's another one of these, isn't it? So that's another one of these. And this one's a star. All right. Next one is what? What's this one? Black hair. Black hair and dwarf, again. So that's five, six, seven. Wow, there's a lot of those, huh? And black hair and dwarf here too, right? That's eight. And what's this one over here? Blonde hair and dwarf. That's one of those. And what's the next one? Blonde. Blonde hair and dwarf again. That's two. And the next one over here? Black hair and dwarf. That's our number nine, isn't it? That's nine. Isn't it nine? That's yeah. That's nine. What's the next one? Black hair and what? And average height, right? Black hair and average height. That's this thing here. So that's three. What's the next one? Blonde hair and, and dwarf, right? There's three of those. And what's the last one here? Blonde hair, Blonde hair and average height. So what is it? What is the ratio? Nine to three to three to one. Nine to three to three to one. It's always going to be nine to three to three to one. The phenol always, if it's two header, if it's two heterozygous parents and two genes, for both genes, then the phenotypic, did I say genotypic? No. The genotypic is ratios are crazy. We're not going to get into it. It's not really that bad, but I don't want to get into it. The phenotypic ratio is always going to be 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Why? Because you're always going to have nine dominant alleles for at least one allele dominant for each one. And you're going to have three of them where they're recessive, right, for one gene, and three where they're recessive for the other gene, and one where they're recessive for both genes. So that's how you do that homework. That's how you do a diver cross. We'll finish meiosis tomorrow. I think we're in a good place. So when you're talking about simple dominant and recessive, right? Dominant, recessive, that's easy. If it's big, if it's dominant, it shows up. This one, the recessive, you need two copies to see it. It's just that simple. That's all it means. Doesn't mean it's good, doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean it's stronger, doesn't mean... It just one shows up, one makes more of the protein or one or protein that works better. But what about this incomplete dominance? What does that mean? Who can tell me what they think it means if you did your reading or you have some just some idea? It doesn't even matter. Yeah. If you're one of the overall doesn't completely have dominance over here. That's right. What she I'll show you I'll, I'll I'll tell you in a second. Let me write this down. So incomplete dominance is when one doesn't completely show up all by itself. So the, in the case that we were looking at earlier, if you had the dominant A, you were a dwarf. If you had, if, if you, it didn't matter if you're a big A, little A, or big A, big A, both individuals were dwarfs, right? 
where you have little a, little a, then you are average height in that particular genetic case. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. In this case, let's use a flower because that's the easiest thing to do. If you have a red flower, Yeah, they used it red. That's a classic example that they love to use because it's easy, it's simple. But they can use anything. We can pick all kinds of traits. But a red flower, to get a red flower, you have, two, you have to have two big A's. Let's just say that in this situation, okay? Now, this is incomplete dominance, right? So now, if you're going to have a white flower... You have to have two little a's. So now notice that both of these are what? Homozygous. That's right. Both of these are homozygous. So the homozygous traits give you a specific color. So far, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound so different from what we talked about with dominant recessive, right? But... The interesting thing is that if you get the heterozygous, what do you think happens? If this was dominant and recessive, because there's a big A, what color would it be? Right. Right. But it's not, it's not com complete dominance. It's what? Incomplete. So what's going to happen when you have the big A and the little A? And it's pink. You're going to be pink. They're going to blend. So incomplete mo dominance means you're blending. So that's like, that's basically like when a, um, So that's the thing with the other one. That's basically like when somebody have a baby. Like one light skin, one dark skin, come brown. Okay, okay. No, you know what? You know what? It's not like that. But, but, it works in a way. The reason it's not like that is because the, what you have with what you have with skin color in humans is a polygene trait. So there's many more many genes controlling one trait. So it's a little different. But I yeah, it, abstent you know, abstensis abstensis. I can't speak this morning. Clearly, there's some there's some similarity in the two situations. So I don't have a problem with you saying that. But it's different, so I, I don't want you to take it to heart that that's what it's like 100%. So just very clearly, if the situation's one gene, we're talking about one gene, two alleles, right? A big A or a little a, two versions of that gene. If you have two copies of the big A, then you're homozygous. And two copies of the little a, you're homozygous. You're two different colors. But if, you have, if you're heterozygous, you're a third color. So you have three phenotypes. You see that? Three phenotypes. So that's why that 9 to 3 and 3 to 1 doesn't work okay. when it's incomplete. You can have th two, just one gene with different, different alleles giving you three different phenotypes because, because... Uh, you can have different genomes. You can have one or two genotypes. Oh, yeah. It's, it gets complicated, as I said. In humans, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's all kinds of... There's all kinds of there's only one gene, but you have more than one gene impacting the trait. We'll talk about that tomorrow. All right. So now, when we're talking about codominance, what does that mean? Now, the, if you think about what the words mean, what the words mean, then it all makes sense. Incomplete dominance means I show up, but I can't. I, I'm not showing up by myself. There's not something else showing up in color. The red and the white show up as pink. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, in codominance, they both show up. So I'm gonna let's talk about this. Let's just do it, and then you can. Then I'd like to hear what you think it's like. But let's let's just do this. Let's say a big A, big A gives you red. Again, this is a flower. This is homozygous. Not the same, not the same creature, not the same species, right? Then white gives you, little a, little a gives you white, right? Does that make sense? 
That makes sense so far because that's what we talked about earlier. But what do you think in co-dominance you're going to get with the heterozygous? You're going to get both. What does that look like? Uh, okay, could be, could be the, some petals white, some petals red. That could be. Or it could be a red, a white flower red dot with red polka dots. Right? Is that like oh yeah, red flower, white polka dots. Yeah, it could be any. It, it's all kinds of different possibilities. That's a little. Di- that everybody brings that up. Yeah, that's oh, a good thing. Yeah, that's a di- that's a that's a completely different situation. It's not. That's no. really. That's something else that we're that's not going to talk about. Okay. It's uh, because it gets a little complicated again with humans. It gets complicated. That's why it's. So here you get not not a you don't got a third color you got a combination of the two original colors red and white, right? So if red is ke- is big A homozygous, white is little a homozygous, then the heterozygous is both red and white. That is codominance. So, so is it always going to be a hom- homozygous like a homozygous and a homozygous together? It can't be. It can't stay a homozygous. Now why got to be turned into? A- because the only way to get both red and white is to have a co- one copy of each of those genes, one version. You have to have a big A and a little A. You can't get a red and white dots unless you have, or polka dots unless you have one version of each gene. So what if you don't? I mean, I'm saying like, I'm saying. Think of a situation, write it down, and see me during advisory. I will answer the question. It's a good question. If you're, look. This is what you're asking is exactly what everybody should be doing. I wish everyone were doing what you're doing, which is thinking about it, right? But think about it and let's discuss it a little later because it's time to go. I'd like to see you. Anyone who anyone who retook the test, let me see you.